how to check a lead acid battery to see what condition it is in and its cells are in. Here's a your typical automobile or boat type lead acid battery. First thing you want to do when you're working on it is make sure it's clean. You don't want to open up the cells and have any trash fall into it, short out your cell, ruin your cell, contaminate your cell, short out the plates inside it, wipe it all off, make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure you're wearing your proper safety equipment. The acid inside this battery will eat your eye up, will hurt your skin, will eat your clothing. Pull out my voltmeter here, set your voltmeter DC volts, that'd be the V with the straight line over the top of it. Once you have your meter on and select it to the right position, let's check the battery, see what kind of voltage we got in this thing. As you can see, I have what looks like a nearly fully charged battery 12 volts. Okay, now you know you have a decent battery. So now let's go in there and look at the uh, cells, check the condition of each cell. On this type of battery it takes a uh, common screwdriver, it has little slots inside the lids that you just pop it right off. As soon as you get it popped off you want to look and see what you have underneath that little cell cover. As you can see, it's a recessed cell cover, so you never know what fell in there, what kind of trash you're going to come up against. I've already cleaned off the top of this before I started making this video, but you might want to have a rag because you don't want any trash in there. Like I said, you don't want to contaminate your battery. You want to look at everything, check it all out, make sure it looks normal, check your water level. If your water level is low right now, you want to test the battery before you service the water because if you service it now, you'll have water on the top of the saw. You won't get a true reading. If you're going to have a cell open and you have that acid right there, you might want to have your neutralizing solution, which is baking soda, standing by case of an emergency or you get it on something and you need to neutralize it right away I mix a little baking soda with the water because I know when I'm done I'm going to have to clean off my meter leads okay, now we're looking at our battery just checking to make sure everything looks right as you see here we have six cells it's a 12 volt battery so 12 divided by 6 is each one of these cells should be capable of storing 2 volts of electricity. So now we're going to check each individual cell. Take one meter, put on a positive post here. Stick the other lead into the cell, into the electrolyte. Touch the uh, top of the plate head. And as you see, we're reading 3.5 volts. A lot of it isn't real voltage, it's just bleed over from the other cells. Then we go and check the other cells. You want to see that each time you go down the row, you can see an increase in the voltage. And like I said, each cell has to put out 2 volts. So it's going to be an increase somewhere around 2 volts. It could be more, it could be less. It has to do with the internal connections on the cell and where you place your meter leads when you're touching the place inside the cell. And as I ran through the cell you noticed each cell had 2 volts somewhere around there and when we got to the end of the cell it was at 12 volts and we check our complete battery again and it's a little bit over 12 volts which is just static voltage but we know basically we've got a good battery and we can tell it's just about fully charged. As you can see, I take my meter leads right away, rinse them off. That acid will eat up your meter leads. If you don't wash it off, the next time you pull out your meter, you might just have to put them in the garbage. So make sure you wash them really good. Wipe them off, dry them off. Make sure you get all that electrolyte off your leads.